brand new cicada. Just come out of a shell, just molted. I actually didn't realize it was doing it. Uh, I walked by earlier and I saw it hanging there and I thought it was just the empty shell. But that is a brand new, fresh cicada. Man, they're pretty. Pretty when it's brand new. I mean, that bright green color. Beautiful wing structure. It's a shame the little buggers can be as destructive as they are. But still, it's a neat looking bug. wanted to talk a little bit more about the tomato pepper cucumber trellis set up here um, and I think I touched on this a little bit whenever I was pruning out the tomato plants but I wanted to make sure I covered it just because I think it's really gonna work out really well fingers crossed here I think it's gonna work out really well so just as a kind of a, a summary again on what I did I went through two foot on center with the plants and four foot on center with the rows. So every two feet, I alternated tomato, pepper, tomato, pepper, tomato, pepper, which is, to me, is a big spacing, okay? A lot of your commercial growers, they're putting putting the plants, you know, one foot on center or even closer, whatever. That's fine, okay? I wanted to make sure I gave them plenty of space to try to have it not be just an absolute mess like it was last year. After the tomatoes and peppers were established, then I came through and planted my cucumbers, which I could have done the same day, I just didn't. But I planted my cucumbers and I did them in between each tomato and pepper plant, at least till I ran out of seed. So you can kind of start to get an idea for where things are missing now. Of course, there's a, there's a pepper plant that's not doing real great. Cucumber between it, there's another pepper. Oh, these last few on this rail, I had pepper, 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 uh, which again was fine. But we're now, we're training the cucumbers up through the panels as best we can, you know, which the end takes a little bit of work, but they'll figure it out. Um, the peppers don't really need to go up through the panels. The peppers tend to be pretty self-supporting, but I am kind of crisscrossing their branches through when I get a chance just to help them. The tomatoes, of course, the tomatoes are a tomato vine, okay? So they're going to grow like crazy, and the tomatoes were the whole point of this whole thing, really, as to why to have a good trellis. The, the cucumbers were too. Last year, my cucumbers were on the ground, and that sucked. Um... But what dawned on me, and I knew this, was, see, I've looked at these, um, these other commercial greenhouses where they, they have a hoop house, right, or a high tunnel, and they, they tie their tomatoes up to the roof, and they use those little yo-yo strings where they can let them down or whatever. I think that's great. That's what I thought I wanted to do, but I don't have the facilities. I don't have the hoop house. I don't have the little trinkets. The panels, I'm actually really happy with. I thought about this a lot more last night. I'm really happy with the panels because as the garden rotates around and moves around, I can move these panels wherever I want. Um, you know, you just set two set two T-posts, tie a panel to them, Dunsies. Actually, <laughs> my neighbor actually came and helped do this when I was out of town. He actually used proper clips, which wasn't really necessary, but it works, whatever. Um, so anyway, we can move them around as the garden rotates around. So that's important. We're not putting any sort of permanent infrastructure. We're not having to grow the tomatoes in the same spot every year, you know, or move a hoop house around or some sort of overhead scaffold. I know some of the commercial growers, they use the, the Florida weave method, uh, which I think for that, they set a bunch of wooden stakes along the row and then they crisscross back and forth. So again, then you got a bunch of wooden stakes. Obviously for us in the off season, we have some panels that we're not using, but it's the farm we always have a use for panels you know it's a good excuse to buy more panels but anyway the point here with the tomatoes okay these are all every tomato we bought i believe everything we got was indeterminate variety romos at least that's what i wanted that's what i was after um and you can see on how this one here is growing we have oops there was a little worm on that one you can see we've got these lower leaves are done for already we've got a couple little clusters of fruit that are starting on here right little cluster this little cluster is going to eventually ripen, 
right, be picked and then die off. And as it does, these lower limbs that are no longer part of that fruiting plant will be trimmed off. So you can see we've already pruned some of them off as I was cleaning it up the other day. So these plants will continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the whole indeterminate variety. They grow forever unless you finally pinch out their, their main leader. Um, but what I'm really thinking I'm going to try to do this year is not pinch them out. I'm going to let them come all the way up here to the top of this panel as much as they want. And then I'm going to let them hang back down, okay? So you've seen the little pots and things where you could do the upside down tomato plant, the hanging tomato plants, okay? The, the plants, they'll make it work, I believe. So I'm going to let them come all the way up here to the top. I'm not going to pinch them when they get to the top. I could actually try to train them sideways because they will grow sideways. Again, they are a vine, so they would actually grow sideways if I wanted to. But I think what I'm going to let them do is try to let them droop back down on their own and then see if I can't turn them back around and have them climb again. We'll just see how much they get done this season. I feel like this year my tomatoes aren't as aggressive as they were last year, but again, it is year two in the same soil. I did not add any nutrients at all, so it wouldn't surprise me if they're a little less, you know, gangbusters than they were last year. Um, I do have the compost. I should put more down and just top dress them, but, uh, but again, yeah, so, so I wanted to mention that idea at least to just let them go, let them get, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. I do not like cages. I've had people ask me, why don't you put cages around them? My wife said, oh, we need to get, go get tomato cages. Growing up, I tried to build tomato cages. I tried to cage tomato plants and it always just infuriated me. It was such a mess. It was so hard to, once you got the cage on the plant, getting the cage off the plant, ripping the plant out, all that, it was, it was a mess. And then you had all these coiled up cages stored around that took up a lot of space. These panels, they lay flat. Stack up easy, no problem. Ah, get! Get out of my garden. That's the latest stray to show up. Try to teach the dogs to stay out of my garden. Um, so you can see here on these, some of these I bent back. It's pretty obvious where I bent them back because they look kind of exposed and kind of naked. But um, see, nice big clusters of flowers in here. These are going to be plenty of tomatoes coming on. Um, but yeah, again, nasty chunk of string. Throw that out of here so yeah i just wanted to share that notion with you guys again i know i'm getting a little distracted here i'm starting to ramble but i like this idea it, it so far i'm really happy with how it's shaping up yeah, i try to come out here every morning um at least just to kind of take a tour around the garden and see how it's doing these tomatoes right now you know a lot of your like i said a lot of your commercial growers they will pick one central main leader at early on and they will focus on just that one, which of course is gonna make the plant go up and tall faster and faster. Some nasty little cutworm feeding on my tomatoes. Had his head already shoved into one of them. Little, little sucker. I'm gonna have to go get some BT and spray him, I guess. Um, but yeah. Oh, so yeah, your commercial growers, they'll a lot of times prune back to one central leader and have it be you know, a true solitary vine, which I love the way that looks. I love seeing the videos and the pictures of these commercial greenhouses where you just have this, what just looks like a tomato, you know, just a vine with nothing on it except big clusters of fruit. It looks beautiful. Mine won't be quite that pretty, but I am being, like I said, a little more you know, greedy, if you will, as far as basically all of these main stems that have started, I'm letting them go. Now, if I feel like it's getting overgrown, I can prune out some of them and prune them back. I mean, so basically on this plant, I've got, you know, here's my... Here's my main stem coming out of the bottom right here, I would say. But I'm letting this vine go. I'm letting this one go. This one just took off to do its own thing. I mean, it's it's really hard to even tell who the, <laughs> who the central leader is anymore on this one. Um, but again, that's okay. That's okay. We're going to do okay. I'm going to pull this cucumber back through on that side to help weave him back. Got one little cucumber and one pepper out here that my buddy missed somehow. I don't know if this row was somehow one plant longer or what, two plants longer, because he's got, there should have been something between those two cucumbers, I think, unless those are volunteers, but they seem really properly spaced. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, if this one gets taller and starts to actually vine out and move, then I'll, I'll eventually fold it over to, to be up here on the trellis. I am really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having the cucumbers grow up off the ground this year and not be out here bent over digging through the vines trying to find cucumbers. Last year we were absolutely overrun with cucumbers, which, you know, is great, whatever. Um, made a lot of pickles, more than I could ever eat in a year. Sold a lot of pickles, so that was good. 
but yeah, okay. Rambling. Just summarize. Um, you know, we'll give you updates as we go here, but I wanted to share the thought process with you guys as far as weaving them back and forth and, and letting them go up and down. You know, my original plan was just was just to train the tomatoes up through the panels, and then when they got to the top, knock them off. And then I thought, well, why bother? You know, if as long as they can stay clean, if they get up to the top and start reaching for the sky and they want to fall over, as long as they don't fall over and break, you know, then we'll. Like I said, we'll let them droop back down to the ground. We'll train them along the top, back and forth, you know, like a grapevine or whatever. That's fine by me. I just really, this year, I just really wanted to keep it cleaner. Last year, you couldn't walk down between the rows. The garden was way too packed. So this year, to be able to walk down through the rows is really, really nice. Now, of course, I do feel like I have some wasted space. Obviously, there's plenty of weeds and nonsense coming up here between the rows, which I don't care for. Um, so, you know, next year we'll be stepping her down a little bit more i think ultimately i'd like to have you know two rows back to back or maybe just one row and then have something planted in closer to it i don't know just yet i really want to get the whole garden set up on you know a bed system uh looking at like how the how the market gardeners do you know curtis stone and uh, jm fortier and a few others like that those they're the ones i follow on youtube but i'd like to be able to get it set up as a bed system which for what they're growing they don't do a lot of conventional crops those guys don't do a lot of corn and beans um, some tomatoes you know but they do obviously usually high rotation beds but i'm thinking i can make it work for me to do the conventional crops but in a bed system for example you know two rows of beans these rows of beans are two foot on center and they're doing a pretty good job of covering the ground but i think i could um, you know basically squeeze two rows close together and have that be one 30 inch bed and then have a walkway another 30 inch bed i think i clean it up but that's a different topic for now we're talking about the trellis system for the tomatoes